Live from the studio at the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies, this is Have a Bible Question, where you are part of the program. Now, let's go to the Bible for answers to your Bible questions. All right, Brian puts on here, but what was the requirement to go to heaven before salvation? Uh, uh, and so great question there as, as far as the idea of what was the requirement to go to heaven. All right. Let's realize we have three dispensations of time that we normally will classify things in. We have the patriarchal age, mosaical age, and the Christian dispensation or the Christian age. Now, when we think about these a lot of times we say, well, there's three laws for our, for the three dispensations. It's really, there's three different laws that we've had throughout time. And it just depends on which time you're talking about. You have the patriarchal law that for non-Jews existed from creation all the way to Jesus. And that was God speaking directly to the heads, the patriarchs, um, of the, of the, of the families giving them instructions. And that's what we see with Abraham. We see that with Noah. We see that with, with Adam. And, you know, and when you read Hebrews 11, there were uh, these men of faith before the law of Moses, before the Jewish nation existed, that God was speaking to them and giving them commands and instructions, and they had to follow the law. In the Garden of Eden for salvation, one of the things they were supposed to be doing is to not eat of the, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But they, mm-hmm. they ate of that, and we see forgiveness on that being given we see sacrifices and uh and offerings being brought we don't have a whole lot of details about that but with abraham we see that we see that with obviously cain abel um in the case there that there were sacrifices involved under the patriarchal system we just don't have a lot recorded and i go back to earlier about the old testament was not it's more historical to bring us the scheme of redemption not so much to tell us all the details of every aspect right and then, Jeff, you had something to add before I go on? Yeah. Well, this is found in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. And, and of course, he's writing to, to Jews, encouraging them to stay faithful to Christ. And, uh, and he touches on this a little bit. He said, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Uh to me, which indicates the fact that, uh, you know, talking about that first Testament, he, of course, he's talking about the old law, but, uh, those that offered sacrifices and we know that chapter 10, verse four, the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. But according to this, uh, that the blood of Jesus Christ provided redemption of the transgressions that were under the first Testament, that they, which are called might receive the promise of e- eternal inheritance. And, and, uh, in other words, the and, and I've heard it described well the blood of Christ the blood that was shed on the cross not only went forward but it went backwards yeah you know, and and that's really what this is saying here uh, uh, you're, so, you're, so this covers the idea of salvation under the old law too uh, what it meant to them or oh exactly yeah, and yeah. so for non-jews you have this patriarchal law that we know goes back to the beginning with Adam and, and goes throughout uh, up until um, the law of Christ. For the Jews, we realize Exodus chapter 19, what we actually have is the Moses goes upon the law and he receives the law of Moses that is given to the Jewish nation, to the Israelites. And that goes all the way to the law of Moses. But since you are walking concordance here, there's a passage of scripture that tells us that we are now under the law of Christ, that those were nailed to the cross, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Well, Ephesians chapter 2, 15 and 16 and Colossians 2, 14, both of those deal with the same uh, subject matter. And Galatians 6 also, which says yeah. the, law, the law of Christ. Yeah. Now, part of the question that Brian has there is what did they have to do uh, to get to heaven before you know salvation came through Jesus Christ? Mm-hmm. And you got and did a good job of answering there. We don't really know exactly what they had to do in that first dispensation, what, what's called the patriarchal dispensation, right. the uh, Adamic, if you will, covenant and then the noic which is noah covenant Mm -hmm. but we know there's righteous people in fact god cared about all people that's the whole book of jonah is not about the fish it's about the repentance of the ninevites 
Uh, but yeah. then you get into the law and that's the next dispensation called right. the mosaical dispensation. And then you have rules and laws and things that you had to do if you wanted to, uh, inherit they didn't use the words eternal life but if you wanted eternal life if you wanted to be approved by god then you had to do those certain things especially the day of atonement exactly and and um we think about the sin offerings that they had to offer uh, yes. you know it, just this constant um sacrifice to try and make them holy before god which which is really the point of the old testament is that they never were truly watched ever they were never uh, able to approach but once we are in christ jesus uh galatians 3 27 uh, romans 6 1 through 4 once we're in christ jesus we're actually priests that can approach god through our mediator the high priest jesus mm -hmm. and it's really amazing so as far as all the specifics that they had to do uh it was in general i could say under the law of moses they had to keep the law of moses under patriarchal law, they had to keep the law that God was communicating to them. Mm -hmm. Why do we not have that recorded for us? Because, again, the Bible is 66 books fit together. And we need to realize there is a story that's being told, and that story is man's redemption, and that, that redemption would be through Christ Jesus. And that's uh, Ephesians chapter 1 through 3. I, I'd have to find the exact phrase, the eternal purpose of, that God had, you know, I believe what three eleven. Uh, oh, that sounds right. I think that's okay. right. Now let's let's look it up because I really want to use it. Yeah. Um. Yes. Uh, Ephesians chapter three eleven. According to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, and what the Bible is trying to do is show us that the eternal purpose was that through Jesus, the sacrificial Lamb, they would be saved. And and just to tie this into Troy's revelation, uh, is, is that you know what do we have who is worthy to open the book who is able to uh to uh be the one to uh, ah, i can't get my phrasing right troy you might have to help me out but uh it would be the lamb you know jesus yeah. everything pointing to him that's exactly right yeah in revelation chapter 4 and verse 5 you see that that throne room and you see that only jesus is worthy and so that was the whole point of the the bible as you were saying these 66 books it starts out by presenting man's problem, uh, and that is sin. And then you see over time God developing this plan to be able to bring his creation back to him. And so all of it's tied together. So to answer Brian's question succinctly, now that we've talked about that, is what were the requirements for them to get to heaven? It's the same requirements that we have today. It's mm -hmm. just they had they were under a different set of rules. Now, we can't, we'd be amiss if we didn't, say, what are the rules to get to heaven today? Yeah. How does man today get salvation? You want to do it, Troy? Sure. Yeah. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 tells that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the very first thing that you need is to be able to hear he, uh, no different than those Jews, no different than the patriarchs and the dispensations before they had to hear about God and hear about the reason why they need God. And that produces well, the faith that we can't please them without it. Hebrews eleven six. Exactly. Now for Christians, for us today, he has sent his son, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world. He sent his son, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. And so we have to believe just like the Jews did in the mosaical age, just like the patriarchs did also, they have to believe in God. You also have to repent. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse three, that unless you repent, you will perish. Same thing for the Jews uh, in the mosaical period and the patriarch. You had to change the way you lived your life and live it according to God. That's the whole purpose of Genesis through Malachi, teaching us about man making bad choices. And then you have to confess the sweet name of Jesus as the son of God. Now we <laughs> got, and I've talked about this. A lot of times I go to Matthew 10 verse 32, which says, if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before my father in heaven. But really the passage, a better passage, uh, as like Guyton says often, is Romans 10, uh, verse 9. Is that right, Jeff? That 10, 9, and 10, right. Yeah. Confession is salvation. We're saved through confession. Mm -hmm. And then the last step is what Jesus brought. 
And that's what you were saying earlier, Jeff, is that the blood of bulls and goats will not take away our sins, only the blood of Christ. Right. How do you get into the blood of Christ? Being baptized, Acts uh, 238, 22, 16, and Galatians 3, verse 27, which puts you into Christ. Right. Oh, man. Great right. job. You know, and, and that's what mm-hmm. God's word says. And that's one mm-hmm. of the things, y'all, that frustrates me. There's a lot of people out there telling you what you need to do to be saved, and they can't tell you what God said you need to do to be saved. They've got right. some formula that that doesn't take you into all of God's word. Great and, point. And you did an excellent job there bringing that out. And there's there's a lot more verses that we could pull in to support each one of those with examples. And um, right. so thank you, Troy, for covering that. 